CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. When asked, who loves better... An old man or a young one? The philosopher replied, an old man, because he loves with his weakness, which grows stronger, while a young man loves with his strength, which grows weaker. Old men, young men, weak men, or strong, love makes fools or saints of us all. I understand you telephoned the police and told them that I committed those murders. No, I didn't. Then do it right now. Call them and tell them I'm the killer. But... Pick up the phone. What will you do afterward? Gordon, what will you do afterward? What do you think I'm going to do? Our mystery drama, The Two Dollar Murders, written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan, and stars Robert Dryden and Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Savor each breath as if it would be your last, the poet advises us. And we do on those rare occasions when we think about it. However... It is necessary to breathe so constantly that the thing becomes automatic. And we hardly think about it. It's a pity. We're in the apartment of Miss Olga Verby. At first glance, Olga appears to be about 25. When you look at her closely, she might be 35. Does it matter? She's attractive. She has a nice smile. Her eyes may be just a bit hard. And she has, as the saying goes been around. Miss Verby is dressed to go out when she hears a sound. There's a key turning in a lock. The door opens and... Gordon! Good evening, Olga. Oh. You're on your way out, I see. Well, I... I, I thought we agreed uh, that you were to be at home all evening, every evening. Well, well, sure. I, I was just going down to the corner for some cigarettes. And that's another thing. I would much prefer you didn't smoke. I dislike the smell. Oh, sure, Gordon. Anything you say. Fine. All dressed up? Just to go down to the store? Well, uh, I learned it from you, Gordon. Always look your best. Suppose I'd come here and you were gone. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Gordon. It won't happen again. Oh, honey, you're mad. Angry. Oh, well, I guess I'd better get into something comfortable. I understand the publisher of the Daily Press received the telephone call this morning. He doesn't know who it was. It was a woman's voice. You want me to fix us a drink? No. The woman offered to feed him some information that could bring about the downfall of Gordon K. Morrison. Of course, he called me immediately. He works for me. I own the paper. You own the Daily Press? Oh, I didn't know that. Well, very few people do. Well, why are you telling me this, Gordon? You're the woman. Me? Well, who else could it be? Oh, but... Gordon, I swear to you... Don't I... lie! What other woman would call a newspaper and try to sell information about Gordon K. Morrison? Gordon, I swear... Don't I... lie to me. Gordon. Gordon, it wasn't me. What other woman knows me? I'll, I'll tell you what other woman. Your wife. My wife <laughs> is a decent, God-fearing woman. Not a harlot like you. What did you call me? And this is how you repay my goodness, my generosity. What Generosity. You set me up in a play bag like this. I never go anywhere, do anything. I've got to be here day and night in case you just might happen to get an idea. You might want to drop around for a couple of minutes. You'd rather walk the street. Let's get one thing straight, Buster. I never walk the street. Flea bag, is it? Well, this is a respectable middle-class neighborhood. I allow you money. Money? Look at these clothes. Right out of the bargain basement. Oh, no, you live quite comfortably. And you got millions. What am I getting out of it? I know girls who've got guys with happier dough. They got cars, jewels, real estate. 
In a couple of years, maybe I'll get a little fatter. A little scrawny. You could toss me right out of my ear. And what have I got to show for it? You would betray me. I got my future to think about. Oh, yes. And I've also been thinking about your future. Yeah? The press isn't the only paper in town. No, you'll never betray me to anyone. Oh, what do you think you're going to do? Hire some goon to, to take care of me? Won't do you any good. Because first thing tomorrow morning, everything I know gets mailed to a certain friend of mine. Well, if anything ever happens to me... Tomorrow morning will be too late, and I never hire goons. When an important matter must be handled, I do it myself. What? Oh, what are you saying? For you, tomorrow morning will be too late. Oh, that gun doesn't scare me. You can't get away with it. Oh, yes, I will. No one knows about you and me. Gordon, please. Please, Gordon, I I'll never again try to... That's true. You won't. Uh, officer, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Uh, why, why are you giving me a ticket? Do you know how to read? Now, look, look, officer, I... Uh... What does that sign say? No, uh, no parking between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Ah, it's very good. Now, do you know how to tell time? Uh, officer, look, I... I, was, I see I... you're wearing a watch, all shiny gold. So, what does it mean when the little hand's on the 11... Uh, officer, the... it was only, only for a few minutes. What does that big sign say across the street, 50 yards down the block, huh? Uh, parking, two dollars. You didn't want to spend two dollars like a sport, so now it's going to cost you five. Now, look, uh, officer, is there is there uh, some way that we can... Uh... Is there some way that we can what? Uh, so, some way uh, we can arrange... Uh... Arrange what? Uh, arrange to have you uh, overlooked? No. And don't say another word. You can get into real trouble. Well, I, I was only... Uh... Trying to seek uh, an accommodation. Uh, mister, this may come as a big, fat surprise, but not every cop in this town is on the take. Guys like you, important-looking guys like you, respectable-looking guys like you, you're the worst crooks of all. All right, here's your summons. Now beat it. Uh, just a minute. Hold it right there. Why? Why would you want to bribe your way out of a five-buck parking ticket? Are you, uh... You've just used a harsh word, officer. Bribe. Is there a nice word for it? Well, I, uh... I don't want this on my driver's license, you see. Yeah? Uh, you know how, uh, how difficult the insurance companies can be? All right, let me set your mind at rest. This is not a moving violation. It's got nothing to do with your driving record or your insurance. It doesn't? No, it doesn't. And you know it as well as I do. Now, beat it. <laughs> Slice of pie, officer? Oh, no, thanks, Molly. I gotta watch the calories. Oh, it's no fun watching them. The real enjoyment is eating them. It's just the coffee. I'm going off soon, anyhow. Oh, then you'll go home to your Nina and eat some lasagna. Oh, spaghetti. Without calories. Oh, boy, she must be some cook, that Nina. <laughs> <laughs> you got a funny story for me, at least? Ah, uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, right. You know, a guy comes in here earlier. Kind of shabby. Looks like a bum. Orders a burger special, apple pie, coffee, right? So? One look. I know. I can tell. He don't have a dime in his pocket. He's going to stiff me, right? Uh-huh. And the way he, he whoops it down, he's got the, the most guilty look on his face. I, I mean, it was comical. I felt like saying to him, okay, pal, relax, enjoy it, but I'm too busy with this, that, and the other thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, the next thing I know, there's the empty plates on the counter. He sneaked out. Without pants. Naturally. He had such a scared look in his eyes. I felt like laughing. What was I going to do? Take him to court for $2? Uh, I don't know. I guess uh, it ain't such a funny story after all, now that I think about it. $2. As if it was such a terrible thing to him that he had to steal $2. <laughs> you want to talk about $2? Look what happens to me just before. Yeah? A guy's parked around the corner illegally. For two dollars, he can put his car in Al's garage just down the street. But no, 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 he's too tight for that. And this guy's loaded. Oh, it figures. The car's a Golden Streak sedan. And that runs 25 grand with your eyes closed. At least. 
And this guy's wearing a suit. I mean, it has to set him back, what, uh, at least three, four bills. <laughs> well, this big sport starts to give me a hard luck story. For a two-dollar ticket. I only hope you gave him a ticket. I pay for them all right. And I could have really bagged him for attempting to bribe a police officer. Well, you should have done it. Yeah, yeah, but you have to go to court on your day off. Who needs you? Two dollars. What two dollars can mean to some people. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it the truth? <laughs> well, <clears throat> good night, Mrs. Goldstein. Good night, Officer Polito. No, Dorothy. These eggs are not satisfactory. Mr. Morrison insists on three minutes exactly. Now, please prepare two others properly. Oh, Gordon, may I speak with you? Only if it's to be a pleasant topic. Well, I, I'm not sure... Rowena, you know the rules. Only happy subjects at mealtimes. Have you read the papers? Now, why should I read the newspapers? News that concerns me is brought to my attention quickly enough. Two people were shot to death last night. Uh, Rowena, is this a proper breakfast topic? Yes. Why? I said they were shot to death. One was a woman, the other a police officer. And why does this concern me? Because, dear, you carry a gun. Are you about to imply that I shot them? Oh, don't be ridiculous. But it's this whole aura of violence that is smothering everything. Uh, Rowena, just what is your point? The fact that you, a private citizen, carry a gun makes you part of the entire irrational attitude. No, I disagree. My attitude is extremely rational. Now, you tell me violence is raging in the streets, and the next breath you tell me it's wrong for me to carry a gun. Gordon, no one should carry a gun. Why do you have to? I'm a wealthy man. I have enemies. Oh, but now, Gordon... this poor young woman who was killed in her apartment and this brave police officer, the animal who murdered them, must be caught. Of course. It's just that guns make me nervous. Now, Rowena, a man must arm himself against a predatory environment. It's man's essential nature to fight. I've built my fortune with my own hands. Now, I have an 8.30 appointment. I'll see you at dinner this evening. Goodbye, my dear. Rowena, I said goodbye. Didn't you hear me? What are you thinking about? Gordon, why did you say a young woman was shot? Uh, when was this? Uh, when I told you about those murders last night. Did I say... I only told you a woman had been shot. I, I didn't say she was young. Well, I assumed, I assumed she was young. That it had to be a, a crime of passion, since you made no mention of robbery. And why did you say it happened in her apartment? I, I didn't say... That's it's true. You didn't say where. So naturally, I assumed it would have been where she lived. Young women usually live in apartments, don't they? And, uh... Just why are you asking me these questions? Why? Oh, no reason. No, it's, it, it's nothing. N nothing at all. What does a woman mean when she says, it's nothing? Who knows? For that matter, who knows what a woman like Rowena can mean when she says anything at all? Experience proves that on this particular show, when a woman says nothing's wrong, it usually is a code word to delineate an infinity of possibility. And we should begin to explore it in Act Two. Suspicion, said a famous writer is the companion of a mean soul and the bane of all civilized society. Well, I wouldn't necessarily agree, would you? And unfortunately, those and similar sentiments have helped give suspicion a bad name. After all, some good, healthy suspicion plus some strong, solid skepticism might serve to keep a great many people honest. To continue... Another cup of coffee, Lieutenant Gomez? No, I haven't drinking coffee all night. Oh, terrible thing. Poor Frank Polito. He, he was in here 
maybe 10, 15 minutes before, before it happened. Such a nice person. I, I can't believe it. I'm still in a state of shock. Mm. Do you know this Olga Verby? Oh, yeah. I, I seen a picture in the morning paper. The blonde girl. Yeah, she came in from time to time. Never said much. You know what she did for a living, Molly? Well, no, she never told me, and I never asked. Mm. Do you have to ask? When an obvious... Now, listen, Lieutenant Gomez, you really shouldn't say bad things about a person that's dead. She had no job, no visible means of support. She had a rent, was always paid on time. Well, so that should show she was a responsible person. She had a closet full of clothes, new color TV, good hi-fi. Who paid for all that? Lieutenant, I never like to ask a question like that. No, neither do I. Except it's my job. Hey, come on, Molly. You know everything about everybody in the neighborhood. Who's picking up those tabs for all the very... I couldn't tell you. Now, tell me this. What was there between her and Officer Frank Ippolito? What? What are you talking about? Are you trying to tell me that Frank and her were... were... That's exactly what I'm talking about. Impossible. Yeah? Oh, he was a man who was in love with his wife. What does one thing have to do with another? No, no, no. You got the wrong customer. Frankie Polito, his wife, Nina, we, he he worshipped that girl. Oh, sure he did. Well, how can you even begin to accuse a fine, decent fellow like Frank? Okay, Molly. You said you read about the murders in the papers this morning. Oh, read the papers, heard about them on the radio. It's all around you. She was shot in the apartment. He was found shot on the street, a couple blocks away. I know. He was waiting for his relief. Shot. Shot. And nobody hears nothing? How is it possible? It's possible. What else did you read in the paper about these murders? What else? Yeah. Molly, both of them were killed by bullets fired from the same gun. What? That's right. Oh, so okay. The murderer shoots Alga Verby. Then maybe somehow Frank finds out and tries to capture him, and the murderer kills him. Molly, Frank was shot in the back. Oh. He was walking up the street to the corner of 11th. He was shot in the back. What would make sense, Molly? I don't know. Olga Verby's place isn't robbed. She herself wasn't attacked or assaulted. No sign of a struggle. So... And the guy who's keeping her. He finds out she's been playing around with Frank Ippolito. I don't want to believe that. And after he kills her, he guns down Frank. You mean you believe that, Lieutenant Gomez? It's so what's known as a theory. He tried to develop a bunch of theories after every murder. And this is the only one that makes sense so far. So, well, it... Who would have believed Frank? Tell me. Although, you know, I, I got a nephew. He's a psychiatrist. I wonder what he would say. Would you know the guy who was keeping all the verbiage? He would say something like, Frank Ippolito was so much in love with his wife that to please her, he does something foreign to his nature. He eats a lot because she takes pride in her cooking. You follow this, Lieutenant Gomez? Had she ever mentioned this guy's name? But he resents what he's doing. He has to get back at her some way, so he he expresses his hostility by being with another woman. At least now you admit Frank and Olga Verby were having an affair. Affair? Working class people don't have affairs. <sighs> did, uh, did Olga ever talk about her boyfriend? <sighs> no. Not to me. Well, he's the key. If someone was keeping her, he'd go to see her at least a couple of times a week. Hmm? Doesn't anybody remember someone who would come into the apartment building? We're checking it out. So far, nothing. Mm. She did talk to you, didn't she, Molly? Mm. Sometimes. Uh, no mention of this man? Not in a direct way. Now, Molly, wait a minute. Try to think, will you, please? Try to review all the conversations you had with her. Yeah. And maybe 
Maybe something will stick out in your mind. Maybe you'll remember something. Will you try? Sure. Sure, I'll try. And now for the half-hourly news bulletin. The police still have no substantial leads in the murders of police officer Frank Ippolito and Miss Olga Verbe. They're tied together by the fact that both victims were killed by bullets fired from the same 38 caliber revolver. A special telephone number has been set up. 555-0002. Please call this number if you have any information that can be of assistance to the police. Our program continues. Well, hello, my dear. Gordon. Well, you're home from the office early. Oh, now don't. Turn it off on my account. Well, I know how thoroughly you dislike modern music. Oh, yes, yes. This modern so-called music where you can't follow any melodic line. This modern so-called art where you don't know what you're looking at. Remember, you dragged me to the museum where we looked at this monstrosity. Here, you must watch your blood And pressure. the fellow sold it. He sold it for half a million dollars. You know, the world's turned upside down. Gordon. There are no standards. It's all the fruits of this permissive society. Gordon. With it, decayed, rotten fruits. Anything goes. Gordon, I'm curious. Uh, yes. Yes, Rowena. Uh, what kind of gun do you carry? Why do you ask? Well, with no real reason. Well, now, of all that... I know it's not the kind of question I'm supposed to ask. No, no, nonsense. Oh, husbands and wives may ask each other whatever questions they wish. Well... There seems to be a mystique to guns, and possibly a courtesy among people who carry them. Uh, perhaps it's an intimate question. No, no, my dear, that's ridiculous. Well, then you're not offended. Offended? Rowena, I'm happy, I'm happy that you seem to be interested, finally, in something real, something wonderful, worthwhile. Here, here, let, let me, uh, let me show you. Well, I don't really... No, this, this, Rowena... Is the finest revolver you can buy. Here, let me extract the cartridges. Uh, true, there's a safety catch, but in passing a firearm from hand to hand, one must observe the strictest precautions. I understand. Uh, here. Here, Rowena, hold that in the palm of your hand. You have the balance. Hmm? How perfectly balanced. Like the most expensively crafted watch. This, Rowena, this is truly a work of art. Well, what I want to know is... a work is... of art, but a dynamic work of art. The greatest painting is motionless. It's frozen forever on the canvas. Do you agree? Oh, yes, but I, this, I, but I... this, Rowena, this comes to life. Suddenly, this gleaming, apparently inert piece of metal sculpture will explode in a violent paroxysm of... Sound and motion. Uh, Gordon, I... This I... exquisitely designed instrument quivers with an excitement that's almost, almost human, Rowena. Gordon, I just asked you about the caliber. Caliber. Yeah, that's fascinating. It comes from the Arab word kalib, meaning a mold. It defines the diameter of the bore or the barrel. And uh, what is this one? My dear, this... Is the exclusive Valentine DeVore Deluxe. And in what uh, caliber? Point thirty-eight. You you mean thirty-eight? Yes, yes, that's the short way to say it. Uh, yes, I, I understand. Now, I uh, I shall take it back from you and wipe it very carefully be before restoring it to the holster, lest the moisture of your hand create a tiny spots of rust. You see? Yes. Oh, Rowena, Rowena, I... I cannot tell you how happy you've made me. Have I? Oh, yes, yes, my dear. You know, as husbands and wives grow older, it's inspiring when they can find new interests to share, to bring them closer together. The time going. Ah, here's Inspector. No. Nothing. Nowhere. Well, there's no shortage of men. I got cops coming in to work on that time off. After all, Frank Capoli was... Yeah. I understand, Inspector. Yeah, I know the problem. Special phone. 
Oh, some of the usual nut calls, but nothing we can use. All right, I will, Inspector. Goodbye. He wants to get blood from a stone. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? What? Molly. What are you doing here? Well, I thought I'd better come see you. Can I sit down? Yeah, sure, sure. To answer your question, I solved the case. You what? I know who murdered Frank. Who? You know who. You told me yourself. The same person who killed Olga Verby. You mean to say you know who he is? Did you remember something Olga said? No, no, no. But I remember something Frank said. Frank? While he was in my place, just before he was killed. But what would Frank say that you could You were right. The same person who killed Olga killed Frank, but not for the same reason. How do you know? Oh, Frank was not cheating on his wife. And I know because I went out to see her. Well, what does that have to do with it? I wanted to tell her how sorry I was. I looked in her face. I could see Frank was true to her. Molly, what are you trying to sell me? Look, when a woman knows her husband is stepping out on her, you can read it in her eyes. I can't. I can. So if Frank had been with Olga, your theory would be right. But Frank had nothing to do with Olga. So why should this person who was keeping Olga want to kill Frank? Okay. Why? I remembered what Frank had told me. And I saw it. I saw the whole thing. I can tell you exactly why Frank was killed. <laughs> And Molly will, but not at this point. In a few moments, in the third act, all mysteries are basically audience participation shows. And so you should also have the answers. After all, everything Frank told Molly, he also told you. We play fair in these things, as you will see when I bring you Act Three. memory, cries the poet, fleetingly glimpsed, a flash of color that lends trembling light to the outer darkness, and is gone. Well, I don't know about your memory, and I claim no great merit for mine, but we have a woman in our story who probably has never forgotten anything she ever heard in her life. That is, when she sets her mind to it. Okay. Tell me. Why was Frank killed? Well... Look, every night, half past 11, uh, half hour before he goes off, Frank comes in for a cup of coffee, okay? So? So he spends about five minutes, and we talk about, uh, you know, whatever. Then he goes around the corner and down the block to wait for Jerry, the midnight to eight cup. Well? Well, now I think back to what we were talking about. And this is what? Ten, fifteen minutes before he's killed. What do you remember? I remember every word he said. Listen, I'll tell you. We were talking about two dollars. Two dollars. A guy's parked illegally. For two dollars, he can put his car in Al's garage down the street, but he's too tight. That figures. But this guy's loaded. Car's a golden street. He's wearing a suit, at least three, four bills. And this big sport starts to give me a hard luck story. For a five-dollar ticket. I hope you gave it to him. Oh, I papered him all right. And I could have really bagged him for... Attempting to bribe a police officer. So that's what Frank said, huh? What's this supposed to mean? A fellow. He, he's got to be. It's paying the bills for Olga Verby. Well, that's what I told you. Well, for some reason, and not because she's cheating, he killed her, okay? Okay. A, a cop is standing by his car, this rich man's car, this golden street. And what is the cop doing? The cop is writing a ticket, a parking ticket. So... Mr. Rich person gets a little bit nervous. He thinks nobody knows about him and Olga. But these days, how can you be positive about anything? The parking ticket could be a record of the fact that he was there. That's why he tries to bribe Frank to get rid of the ticket. Uh, now, Molly... Now, Molly, uh... what? Frank told me right out. A man who looked rich, who drove a $30,000 golden streak, tried to bribe his way out of a $5 parking ticket. Now, what you're saying is the man killed Frank so he could destroy the ticket? That's exactly what I'm saying. That makes sense. You want to sit here and argue? There's only one way to prove it. Yeah? Do I have to do all the work around here? Get hold of Frank's summons book. 
you'll discover one of two things. Either the whole book is missing, or the copy of that ticket is gone. Okay? Okay. The last recorded ticket in Frank's book was for uh, Alfred Garrison. One of the stop sign at 5.30 p.m. And that's it. And nothing until 11.30 at night? Frank was in my place 20 after 11, 25 after. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? There's a blank summons form and duplicate missing. Of course, there's got to be. Now, uh, the last ticket written at 5.30 was number 6227. The next blank ticket should be 6228. But instead, it's 6229. There, I told you. And now the news. Wednesday night's double murders are still unsolved. Police say they have a single lead. It is believed that the killer may have driven a gold streak automobile. Police are interviewing residents of the neighborhood to determine if anyone can remember seeing the car. I don't blame you, darling. The news is so depressing. <sighs> have we, uh, any plans for the evening? Uh, the evening? Oh, uh, the Robertsons want us to play bridge with them. Oh, darling, we did that last night and Thursday night. Yes, and Wednesday night. Oh, did we play Wednesday night? I, I don't seem to remember. What did we do Wednesday night? Well, I uh, I was driving home from Philadelphia Wednesday night. Oh. Yes, my uh, meeting with George Dawson ran late. And then we went out to dinner. I think it was past midnight when I got home. Oh, oh that must have been a long drive. Rowena? Something the matter? Uh, n- uh, no, 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 nothing. <laughs> Oh, how's my murder case coming? Oh, oh, it's coming. Why don't we have any results? Well, Molly, we're getting there. There are 2,200 golden streaks listed in the metropolitan area, New York, New Jersey, Southern Connecticut area. And we're checking out ownership of each and every one. Oh, but that's going to take time. Mm-hmm. From this, we got a likely list of suspects and keep narrowing it down. And after a while, we may nail our guy. Of course, we could get a lucky break, but don't count on Mr. Dawson's office? Uh, uh, yes, uh, this is Mr. Morrison's secretary. Mr. Morrison? Uh, Mr. Gordon Morrison of New York. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Morrison had an appointment with Mr. Dawson. I wonder if he left his glasses there. Mr. Morrison had an appointment with Mr. Dawson? Yes, uh, last Wednesday. Well, that's impossible. Mr. Dawson's been out of the country since the first of the month and won't be back till next week. Oh. Uh, oh, I must have been mistaken. I'm sure you were. Mr. Morrison must have left his glasses somewhere else. <laughs> Well, that's the only lead we've got so far, Inspector. The more men I can have to run it down, the quicker I may be able to get results. Yeah. Inspector, that's a special phone. I'll call you right back. 555-0002. Hello? Oh, I was going to ask if this 555-0002, but you, you, you just said it was. I do, uh... You have anything to tell us about the... About the murders? Uh, well, I... I have something to ask you. Ask? You say the murderer used a thirty-eight caliber revolver? Yes. Well, could you perhaps tell what kind of revolver it was? Could you tell if it's a thirty-eight caliber Valentine DeVore revolver? Oh, we can tell if it's a thirty-eight, but we can't always tell if it's a specific make. Why? I, uh... Marty, uh, well, I... better trace this. Important for me to know. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, why is it important for you to know? Well, because. Why, um. Uh, why don't I just have ballistics check it further and then we can call you back? Uh, what's your number? My number is. Oh, no. Hello? Hello? Uh, you didn't have enough time to get a tracer, did you, Money? Oh, oh, Gordon, I, I didn't hear you come in. 
You look so frightened. Well, do I? Something the matter? Well, I... I thought you were busy in, in your den. Oh, darling, does this music bother you? I'll turn it off. You know, Rowena, really I never realized before how truly attractive you are. As a matter of fact, Paul Banner called it to my attention the other day. He said, Gordon, you... You have a beautiful woman there in Rowena. Why don't you run for office? That's what gets a man elected these days, an attractive wife. Would you like to get into politics, Rowena? Gordon, did... Is that what you came in here to ask me? No, as a matter of fact, I came in here to ask you about a telephone call. A telephone call? Yes, two of them. Uh, I'm going over the bill. I see here a call to Philadelphia to uh, Dawson's office. I never called him from here, did you? Uh, Did I? Yes. Why would you call him? And uh, here's another call I can't remember. It's to New York City. Oh, Gordon, I can't remember all the calls I make to New York. 212-555-0002. Who's that? Who's who's that? Well, well, I don't remember. Well, it doesn't really matter. I can check with the phone company. Yes, you you could. But you don't have to. It's to a department store. They were having a sale. Any results on our case, Lieutenant? Well, we may be able to glimpse the light at the end of the tunnel. (laughs) Where have I heard that before? Hey, you... You want a sandwich? I got no time. I just sneaked out for the coffee. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, yeah, he's here. It's for you. They don't let you alone. I don't want to be left alone. Yeah. Did you get my note, Marty? The list I left on your desk I got from the Valentine DeVore Arms Company. It's the people that sold 385 guns... In this part of the country. That's ten names. Check each one against the list of the people who own Golden Street cars. See if you get a same name on both lists. Okay? No, it shouldn't take too long. It's all in alphabetical order. I'll hold the phone. Hey, what's this? It could be the break. You mean we're going to get him? Yeah, Marty. Who? Gordon K. Morrison, Greenwich, Connecticut. Rowena, Darius, will you come here? Yes, Gordon. What is it? Rowena, when did you realize that I shot those people? Gordon. How did you happen to suspect me? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You said you called Dawson to find out where I was that Wednesday. I didn't tell you about going to see Dawson until just the other day. Gordon, And I didn't go there anyway, so you found that out. And uh, 212-555-0002 is the special New York City Police Department number. Now, why didn't you tell them? Nothing. Rowena, you should have told them everything. I had to know about your gun, Gordon, for myself. I'm still your wife. Well, that's why I'm not angry with you. You did the correct thing, Rowena. I had no right to kill her. Why did you? Because she had managed to learn about the scanners we're about to make for the Air Force. There was bribery. We uh, would have been ruined. Oh, the police officer... If only he hadn't written out that parking ticket. Why did you? Why did you want her? The girl? I don't know. It's a thing to do, I suppose. Well, I've come to my senses. What are you going to do? I broke the law. I deserve to die. Now, Rowena, you may have done your duty, but you betrayed me. So, uh... You also deserve to die. Gordon, please. I realize now that my entire life has been building up to this one, this one supreme moment, this fantastic climax. Now here, the Valentine DeVore Deluxe, this beautiful revolver. It's lovely, it's lethal. No, Gordon, you must have... How many times I've longed to place the cool barrel against my brow. No. We must die, Rowena, we must die. No. Together. Oh, my dearest, it'll be like like making love together. I, now just I, I, hold my hand and look into my eyes. Don't kill me. Oh, but I must. I must. Don't you understand? Yes. Yes, Gordon, I understand. 
That's why I don't want you to kill me. I want to... I want to kill myself. Oh, Rowena. But don't deprive me of holding the beautiful revolver in my own hand. Oh, yes, yes, my darling, yes. Give me the gun. Quickly. Yes, yes. Is it loaded? Oh, yes. Yes, here, here you are. Now, hurry. I want my turn to... No, Rowena. Rowena, don't, don't point it at me. Oh. Oh, Rowena. I'm glad you did that. I, I would never have, never have had the courage. Thank you. Thank you. And now turn, turn the beautiful revolver on yourself. On yourself. Rowena. Rowena. Of course not. She did no such thing. And a few minutes later, when Lieutenant Gomez arrived, she was still standing over his body with the beautiful revolver still clutched tightly in her hand. Well, in a short while, I shall be back with some explosive addenda. of the matter, there is a link between love and death. And if fortune is feminine, as the poets say, so is war. The very word gun itself comes from a lady's name, Gunhilda, which means battle. And so some years ago, when there were those who urged us to make love, not war, they may have been missing a point. We have people in this world to whom the act of making war is like making love. Our cast included Robert Dryden, Larry Haynes, Bryna Rayburn, and Joan Shea. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.